So I'm here tonight. I thought something you said high saloon, high brow, or something. Well, I'm That's why we invited you. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm here uh, to bring it down to peasant time. <laughs> um, I'm from Killarney. He said, uh, gentleman over here said he, he's going to Killarney, or we're in Killarney, from like around the town, outside the town there. Lovely place to go. My father said, if you haven't visited, if you visit Ireland and haven't been to Kerry, you're never going to hell. <laughs> Just a warning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I came over here a few years ago, <laughs> quite a while ago. And anyway, I had uncles here in Chicago and New York. And they, they all took a sip. You know, maybe more than a sip. <laughs> Some of them, they used to say, before they left Ireland, they drink the drop down. Now, a lot of people here probably know what the drop down is. You know, the Irish would never drink water. It's a mark, it was a mark of sin way back years ago. <laughs> and, uh, the the drop-down was what you'd have on the roof if you didn't have a gun. So they'd be out there drinking. You know, the man was too thirsty, you'd drink the drop-down. That's pretty, pretty, yeah, that's pretty thirsty. But anyway, I had, a, I had an uncle in Boston, and his name was Pat Barry. And he, was, he was a little hard on the drink. and He's walking down the main street in Boston when they had a main street. He's going to a wick. He went into a pub and he had a few. He was in there and he met a cart man in there. And he said, Patty, where are you going? He said, I'm going to a wick. He said, I'll go with you. He said, OK. So they had a few more drinks. Then we walked down more blocks, went into another pub, and met a clear man in there. He said, Barry, where are you going? He said, I'm going to a wick. A friend of mine is down, down the road here. He said, do you mind if I go with you? He said no, so they had a few more there, and then they stopped a few more places. By the time they got to the waking house, they were well idle. <laughs> and they went into the wrong house. <laughs> and they knelt down beside the piano. <laughs> <laughs> the the man looks over to my uncle, he says, Barry, he says, I don't know who your friend was, but he had a grand set of teeth. <laughs> And the chair man said, yeah, but he had a not bad one here and there. <laughs> anyway, they got out of there and they're walking down the New Haven Railroad. And I just went to go to my uncle. He says, you know, Barry, he says, this is the longest flight of stairs I was ever on. <laughs> and the other fellow said, yeah, but is this, this low banister this <laughs> Anyway, he was a devil for the drink. And Mary, the wife, she wasn't putting up with it any longer. And she not very nice, and so she finally went to the, the parish priest. She told him he was drinking morning, noon, and night. The parish priest said, well, how do you treat him when he gets home? She said, I'm not very nice to him, I'll tell you that. But he said, take a little different tack. Next night he gets home, be nice, and see what happens. My uncle home, comes home, you know, tag him the next night. She meets him at the door, takes his hat off, gives him a copy of the Boston Globe, sits him down, she said, now, Patty, she said, would you like a drink? He says, sure, I might as well. I'm going to catch up when I get home anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, of course, of course that, that didn't cure him at all. <laughs> so every night, Patty came home, taking both sides of the road, you know, and he'd be passing this graveyard. So she thought she'd scare it out. On a white sheet over her, she stands beside the graveyard gate, and as Paddy is passing the graveyard, she jumps out and she says, Ha ha, Paddy, she says, I'm the devil. He says, She cans with me, sure, I married your sister. <laughs> 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 now, of course, they went to Mass every morning. Paddy would want to be going up to the front of the church and he wanted to be hanging outside the door with the guys. But she dragged him on up. He had to walk on the street. And he's up there and Father Murphy comes out one Sunday and he's doing the sermon on the loaves and fishes. And he says, uh, with 40,000 loaves and 7,000 fishes out, Lord fed five people. So my uncle said, I could do that. So Father Murphy ignored him. He went back in the sacristy after mass, and he said to the altar boy, you hear that Barry fellow hecking me out there doing the sermon? He said, yeah, Father, you had to text a little bunch. It'd be two barley loaves and five fishes out, Lord, for multitude. 
Yeah, Father Murphy said, I have to correct that next Sunday. He comes out next Sunday. He says, I'd like to correct something I said last Sunday. She had two barley loaves and five fishes out of lot fed 40,000 people. He looks down at my own. He says, could you do that, Barry? My uncle said, I could. Father Murphy says, how? He said, I'd feed him what was left over from last Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, uh, during the sermon, of the intense sermon, the choir was up there, this large lady of soprano, out and he broke, she fell down, got hung up on the chandelier. <laughs> Father Murphy said, the first man here that look up will be struck blind. <laughs> and my uncle turned to the wife, he said, I think I've chats one eye. <laughs> Story about uh, if you recall the uh, old uh, Irish storytelling of Shanachies that were called the past stories on down from generation to generation. And this is the story of uh, discovering America. And uh, who was the first Irishman to set foot in America? Let me say. And of course, uh, you might have heard it was St. Brendan, the navigator. But I'll tell you the story like I heard it, which my father never told a lie except when the suit didn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, a fierce argument came up in our house one night between Connie and Casey, a tiny wiry little man, and Batty O'Brien about who was the first Irishman to set foot in America. I'll tell you now, says O'Brien, a man of huge proportions and a historian to boot. The first Irishman said, foot in America was St. Brendan, the navigator. And when was that so, says Casey? I'll tell you now, says O'Brien, or I wouldn't have brought it up or down. He says, St. Brendan were born in the Phoenix County Kerry around the year 400 AD. He died in Anacoon in County Galway around 480 AD. Now, you took, take, uh, he did the navigating in the prime of his life between 440 and 460. You add up all those figures and you come with a hint's kick of 1500 years since the first Irishman set foot in America. Is that all you know, says Casey? Irishmen were going to America long before that. Can you prove it, says O'Brien? I could, says Casey, or I wouldn't have brought it up or down. <laughs> he says, my uncle tight Florida, he said, was on a sailing vessel one night about 200 miles out of the coast of County Clare, when they were decanned. And they threw out the anchor and they went to bed. What, what did they want up for, right? So, but when they got up in the morning, there was a stiff breeze blowing, so they pulled up the anchor. And what do you think was caught in the hook of the anchor but the wheel of a horse's cart? And what does that prove, says O'Brien? It proves, says Casey, that Irishmen were going to America by road before the flood. One more on the same vein as that. It's called uh, the looking glass, the mirror, before it was invented, or it was invented. And that's the story. It was, had just been invented, and, but this man didn't know about it. So, it's always been amazing to me how the women got along before the looking glass was invented. But the looking glass was invented. But this man was dull of the fact. He came from an out of the way place and back to the end. So he's going into town on an excursion one day, and he's walking down the main street. And he went into the shop and he saw a basket of these oblong things sitting on the counter. He picked one up, he put it in front of his face. Ah, gee, you see, a picture of my father. I wonder where they got it. <laughs> he asked the girl inside the counter, how much it was only a trifle, and very careful, putting it in his inside pocket, not to let the wife see it. She didn't have the same draw. I know you know what that is, since you're all out of She didn't have the same draw for the father-in-law, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but he's inside in the cottage one day, eating dinner, and 
he had the coat off and hanging in the back of the chair, and the neighbor came in and said the chimney was in fire. A serious occurrence at that time, too, because they had patched roofs. The man ran out the door, and as soon as he got outside the door, that she headed for the pocket, pulling out the looking glass and put it in front of her face. Ha ha, she says. And then this the old Dolly Varden, he's been running off with his <laughs> I'll soon fix his ass. Baxter. Gearing yourself for battle. Well, well, long to the poor man came back after doing a good turn with the neighbor. She confronted him with it. Of course, he denied it. He said it was a picture of his father. You think she'd believe him? She did a deal. Throwing the shawl around her and heading over the road to the PP. That's the parish priest of Ireland. So she told the parish priest what was going on. The parish priest said, such a fine, upstanding, genteel, devout Catholic gentleman. The thing the parish priest said himself. And you may say, Father, doesn't he have a picture of that woman in his pocket? What's uh, we, we have to see about this? Heading over to the farm. And at that, that time, they had half doors in all the farms to keep the, you know, the pigs and the, the calves and the four-legged animals out. They didn't keep the chickens because they just flew right over. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> but uh, he stuck his head in over the half door. He said, here now, my good man, he says, this is enough about this. Show me that picture of that man in your, of that woman in your pocket. Well, the poor man could have gone through the ground. What was there to do? He pulled out the looking glass, gave it to the parish priest. The parish priest put it up. He says, Are you two Amadons all together? Isn't that the parish priest that was here before me? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, I will